baking soda. Because today is what? The experimental show, folks. What will baking soda do? It absorbs odor. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> um, it's good for cooking. It helps things rise or be eerie or something. I never was good at baking, so I don't know this. Um, but we're going to do something special with it. You can see when that one was supposed to be changed by. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're back to the rocket ship experimentation. So we've got the three that we made on the first show. I believe that was two or three weeks ago. And now I'm going to give it a secondary shot uh, and stylize it a little bit more. Get a little more, uh, fix up a couple of things I thought weren't perfect. The other thing we're going to use is this baking soda. You guys may have seen it on Blown Away. One of the glass blowers used it to put a bunch of bubbles in the glass. I've never used it before myself, but I'm gonna give it a shot now and see what it does and how it goes. Come back in and see what happens. So I got some crystal clear glass here. I'm gonna go for a nice layer of baking soda, or is it baking powder? Is it even getting on there? There it goes. Ooh, I can taste it in the air. I don't either. I think I'm going to gather on top of it. Isn't that the question? How do we contaminate all the glass in the furnace when we do that? That is the question. Am I burning it away right now completely? Yeah, so why would you splash it? Because I wanted to get enough heat to blow a bubble into it. We're experimenting right now. There's the bubble. Whoa, look at the texture on there. It's on there. That's right. Hey, like if I was working in a production studio, say like glass baking or something, and scab, most likely I would be able to sit down and try something like this. That's crazy. To be the meat for the day and have the widgets I had to produce, and have no time to experiment. Although, in historic glass shop, at the end of the day, it was called whimsy time. Whimsy? That's pretty cool. Yeah, so if you go in or sometimes you might find something that would call it Look at that. Oh, it didn't even count right. Look at that. It wouldn't even like stick to it. That's interesting. Now what? I know I think I dropped a little in there too. Oh yeah, if you could grab that. There's definitely some in there. I think I got a lot on there. I think just one quick pass might have been enough. I'll just play around with this for a second and we'll just take a look at what it looks like, even though there's definitely no way this is gonna turn into a uh, rocket ship. Yeah, now that looks good there. I think I just had too much on there. I think so too, because there's still more in there. This is a crazy, Peace, folks. An orb. I'll take it if you got it. We'll just throw it on there and make a crazy uh, baking soda special. The baking soda rocking ship. This is wildness. Rocket ship, rocket ship. Okay. Wow. Folks, that's a lot of wasted clear glass right there. There's, I don't know if it's gonna, I can't. I don't think it's going to. How about, do you want to make it round and we stick a blowpipe this way and we start over? And just make it like a solid uh, piece? That, or if you put a blowpipe this way, it will be nice and hot, just marble it again and we'll start from the beginning. That's like, just stick a blowpipe right up against it and then blow the bubble into it? Yeah, like transfer it off that pipe onto a different blowpipe and flip it around. I just never heard of putting it on a blowpipe and then introducing a yeah, bubble I, into it. What, <laughs> what difference would it make? I, I don't know. I don't know about it. I don't know about it. It is the experimental show. 
This is quite globular. Or you can just start over too. I might just start over. I'll give it a couple blocks here and just see if I can get it sphere size. Because I could just make the rocket ship solid. It doesn't have to be blown. And it does have a lot going on in it. It's tough because I kind of got a neckline in it. So I'm trying to get this large glob really hot right now with not a lot of connection onto the pipe. Oh, I thought you wanted a bigger one first. Yeah. Whoa. Do it block Look, that way. Looks like some kind of like sacred stone. You could. You could turn it into like the, the glass crystal. You could make up a story. Then you could uh, take it to Renaissance, build a little altar for it, and be like... It does look like some sort of like... The glass blower's crystal. Crystal. I think we could utilize this for sure. So I think this is where a craftsman and an entrepreneur come together with ideas. You know, a craftsman might just be like, this isn't right, get rid of it. But an entrepreneur is always like... More, more. Look at that. That hole up there is crazy, and then you see some crazy action inside on this side. This is going to be a really cool one for an annealer reveal in the future. And I think it might look best if we polish it like a rock, if we diamond saw the bottom and then polish it to a completely polished, uh, smooth edge. Most interesting. This is one of those things that's a little hard to see on camera, but it will be on our experimental shelf until otherwise noted. It's got a lot going on in there. Yeah, you might have put maybe too much on. Yeah. Well, you don't know. We're experimenting. Exactly. So now there's a lot of action there. Now I'm going to, on the next one, I'm going to take just one quick pass. I'm going to be like, and then I'm going to blow a bubble and do it and go gather over it. Hopefully that'll do the trick. It's almost reacted like ashes do in glass. And when Chris does his ash pieces, I've seen the way that ash doesn't quite seem to stick to the glass. When you gather over it, every tiny little bit is so magnified and strong looking. It's pretty insane. So I'm going to take this over to the box. I'm going to knock it right off. The box is the cooling oven, the annealer, where he'll put it in overnight. It will cool. That's a nice solid piece. So. Definitely want a longer annealing cycle on that one. The other thing is with this much foreign material on the inside of a solid piece like this, who knows what's going to happen. It could have a lot of stress or some pressure within it from the, that extra amount of baking soda, and it could not turn out good. But we're going to see. Look how white that baking soda got. It almost looks like white frit, like white color. Round two. Round two. This one's going to go in the bucket with all the uh, dust from the shop so that we don't have any baking soda re-put into our furnace. Here goes round two. I'm going to keep it nice and small, keep it nice and tame. And I'm actually going to blow the bubble in there first so that I don't have to worry about the heat or the shape of it after uh, I go into the baking powder. So you are experimenting with baking soda. Yep. I'm experimenting, whoa, with some new dental floss. And when we say we walk the talk about recycled glass, I just wanted to share this with you. Recycled water bottles is what this dental floss is made from. Really? That's pretty cool. That is pretty and sweet. And then infused with coconut oil, because I've got a little cavity. And so the dentist was like, hey, here's some dental floss. 
what the heck? Who knew it was recycled? So back to uh, plan B, plan C. Jake is back in the furnace. The first bubble was a little too long. So he's gonna do a second one. Shaping it on the marver. Are you doing yellow? What's the yellow for? The yellow and the orange and the blue are for the flame under the... Uh, oh. All right, let's see how much he adds this time. That's it. Are you gonna do any on the tip? Nope. Okay. One quick pass. You can almost, I'll even try brushing a little bit off. See what that does. I actually just burned it with the towel a little bit for a little extra color. That's what I meant to do. Clear on top of this, and we're going to start shaping her up. That's much better. Did it work that time? There it there is. There we go. But it is still pretty bubbly. That's going to be a lot of bubble to work with. I hope that it doesn't cause any trauma. There will cause trauma. Do you want me to tell you now or later? There will cause trauma. So the thing about the gasoline glass, when I had done it at Haystack, because of all the air bubbles in there, it holds its heat completely different. So it's it's uh, it's different to work with. Trauma there will cause. So perhaps, but you might get it just fine and it will be lovely. I don't want it as big as the last one. I'm trying to switch it up a little bit here. If I remember correctly. So Jake's gonna make a rocket ship. I'm actually gonna do a UFO. Time allotting. A UFO, folks. We're going to space regardless. That's gonna be really cool. A Saturno, that's another trick we learned from Lino. There's a famous artist in Seattle that did really well. Ben Moore, making giant Saturnos, giant Saturns. Saturno? That's what he called the product. This looks super cool. Glow? Good. Very cool. So it looks milky, but it is not. That's just a lot of bubbles in there. It's just clear. The I yellow, think it is milky. You can really see the baking powder, actually. Yeah. The yellow is just from the heat, the amberish color. Right. OK, well, I'm going to flatten up the bottom, and then we're going to go for a uh, Maurice and then the flame. And I'm probably gonna hand you the flame because I got the perfect hand you this and make the flame because I got the perfect idea for putting it together. Don't wanna steal your thunder. Let you work out that perfect idea. Will you cap it? Oh. Nice. going on there yeah it's flat on the outside but on the inside the bubble is folded crazy okay so let's uh I don't think we actually need a Maurice I'll just give this to you I'm gonna make the flame all right babysitting going on pardon me good sir So the reason Jake wants to do the flame is he knows exactly how he wants to set up the color. Uh, you can ask someone to set up the color for you and the pattern and, and way that you want it. 
adding a little bit of blue to the flame this time, folks. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange, and then watch this. Whoosh. Couple little fragments of blue. Because it's a blue hot flame. Oh, uh, we can switch it up here. Thanks. Are you taking it upside down? Yeah, I'll take it over the top. That looks very spacey. Stay focused. So here's another thing I learned at the dentist. If you have undiagnosed ADD, you tend to clench your teeth or even diagnosed. I didn't realize that's a trait of ADD. Me either. So now I'm like, oh no. When I say stay focused, maybe it was for me. Right, right. Very successful way to make a flame. Nice and sharp. Look at that. That rocket ship is blasting off. Except now, how do we punny it? No punny. That rocket ship's going to the moon. Just going. So now, and Matt, I think we're gonna need your help on this. We're gonna start bringing over some clear spheres, folks. Size? We're talking like, let's start with like uh, that big, that big. And we'll just uh, take the first few a little bit on the slow side so I can get it set up. And then we'll start running them a little quicker after that. Okay, I'll let Matt lead. I'll follow. I'll match whatever he brings over to Jake so that we have the same size. All right. Flat crimps, one of my favorite tools. These are back from my college days. Just to give you a heads up, these tools don't really wear out that fast. Nice, then. You can cut off the extra and gather right over it for the next one. How fast do you want to wait until you do your thing? Yeah, you could, uh, yeah, wait till I give this guy one quick flattening. Go for it. Yeah, just clean up that pipe. Yeah, for the next gather, yeah. So that one's gonna be a square, the only square. So he's sizing it up, three spaces. Let me take a heat on this one. And one of the reasons in a glass shop, traditionally you apprentice, is that so you learn the timing of things. That's not anything you can learn in a book. It was already broken <laughs> off, it fell in the hole. I think it broke because of that baking soda. It was just much too much in there. It had two layers. It was like two different pieces of glass. Too many bubbles, too much craziness. I'll leave it here so we can look at it a little later. It yeah. was kind of crazy. It's pretty wild, so maybe it's just even less baking soda, but that's pretty treacherous, folks. <laughs> no good. Do you want me to do my UFO so you have a minute? Yeah. And then you can... Uh... I don't remember on the show how much they use, do you? I don't remember at all. Maybe one of our amazing uh, Glass Academy addicts can holler at us with that info. Yeah, and I, yeah. That's uh, treachery, folks. Not good. Time to get the broom out. So we haven't made any UFOs yet. This is completely experimental. We're gonna see what Michelle comes up with. So my question is, should I UFO in the baking soda so we learn a little more about baking soda and take the gamble, or should I, I think take just the do gamble it regular? To see if we can get it figured out. All right, take the gamble. Put that right there for now so we can... I feel uh, like I'm playing the lottery. Check those guys out. All right. Pipe 
wasn't heated, so I'm giving it a quick heat. Put a piece of glass up here even. All right. So UFO is a little different. Look at the color coming out on that flame, though. I love that flame. And I, I don't. I think I could use more blue next time. I don't see any blue on the tip, but it's got a beautiful gradient from uh, almost like a red to an orange to a yellow there. I like it. So I forgot that I have to take another gather on top. So she's on a blowpipe here. And you're going for the baking soda, huh? Yep. Should I get some out of here so you do even less? Okay. Uh-oh, looks like some of it's stuck to the marb. I... Okay. Very little. So... Tech support said the internet is telling us very little bit of baking soda. Obviously, I had used too much. I'll scrape a little more off her area there. Well, and my glass is colder, so it will not That's pick up very as true. much. Perfect. A couple missed spots. Did you brush yours off? I did. Feels like I've just brushed it all off, but we'll find out. Yes, exactly. Very little. Now, while I still got this fresh in my brain, I'm gonna remember which color's which and get these back where they belong. Because mixing up colors is treacherous business. Those guys are good to go. How's it looking? It's in there. That looks good. It looks a lot more uh, manageable than mine was. It's looking like Pluto. Oh, Pluto, Mars. That was another thing. When yep. they blow up your teeth and you look at a picture of your gums, it looks like Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Very celestial. So for what I want to do, I want it a really nice round shape, but the baking soda is causing the way the bubbles are, different spots to blow out differently. I was, Jake, we got to watch that. What's that? I think that could be some baking soda. If it got on the jacks, I don't know. Great. From, uh, how, what do you mean? That's baking soda? I don't know. It's a question. No, that's just wax. Okay. We'll be making a masterpiece and suddenly get a little baking soda on it and lose the whole thing. <laughs> no! Be treachery. So, thank goodness for the internet. That's so nice that tech support passed on the info. So we have a little guidance along the way. Blow. Blow. Okay. Ooh, the color would be super cool. Like yeah. in the recycle, they could be space bubbles. It could be a whole class. Okay, um, how about a nice punting? Size of a dime, like a punty? I punty? don't know. Not, yeah, not super pointed. It's, it's all, okay. So it holds it real good. So the next is going to be to punny it, and then I'm going to push the sides open to make the ring. Made quite a few punnies this morning. I went over and assisted uh, Nolan, another assistant in our shop here, in making goblets. Went over to his parents at his hot shop. Oh, you were there? You downtown. were here? Downtown, yep. Nice. 
So made, what was he working on? He was making some goblets. We made some goblets and we made a pretty large vase too. This weekend is, I think, the Habitat opening. Yeah. One of the largest glass galleries in Michigan and the nation happens to reside right here in Michigan. About 30 minutes from the studio. Mm. That totally looks like the moon. So I'm not going to put this in the clear bucket. Exactly. It does look like the moon. Going for the UFO. Do, 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 do. So tonight we have a, a private group coming to the studio, just so everyone knows that is an option if you ever want to come to the studio with your organization and do a team building exercise. Strange that my mind is so much on teeth because it's an orthodontic group. Wow. They get out uh, every couple weeks, every couple months and do a team building event. And tonight they're coming to the Glass Academy. Yeah, it's going to be 20 dentists coming in. Orthodontist. What's the difference? Orthodontists are braces. Ah, braces? Braces. How many? Why is that a completely different practice than the dentist? Because you're just putting hardware on the teeth and you're moving them. Mm. Right? I see. I thought you said something. Primary oh, yeah. doctor and a foot doctor. I see. This makes sense. It does blow my mind that one doctor can specialize in only feet, though. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is start pushing in a ridge from the inside. Oh, yeah. When I come out, I'll have you shield my arm. Okay. So if I turn too fast, it's going to spin open, which I don't want, but I have to get the ridge hot enough. Do we have paper anywhere? Yeah, we do. I can pull the paper out. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Pushing up. One paper. Thank you. Next, I need to squeeze that ridge down. The ring. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I really wish I had thought of this when we did the uh, the moon for the experimental shell, because that was this is exactly what that is. If we just did a recycle or a clear ball with the bubbles perfectly That's why round. It's the recycle or the experimental show. So the ash, not the ash. What is it called? Soda ash? What's the stuff we're using over there? Uh, baking soda. Baking soda. Just causing one side to be a little difficult to work with. Yeah. Not very easy to keep it symmetrical. We could call them bumpy cups. Bumpy cups. Never say die. Unless it hits the floor like mine. Still screaming hot, folks. Maybe not. Pretty hot. Looks like it could be like some sort of pot of gold so or the way satchel. The cup, it didn't pull out the same. All right, so let me think here. I'd call that a satchel. It's not over yet. UFO satchel. So the, the theory was to push the ridge in there and then seal it back up. Right. And then I would have papered the top to kind of close it up.
All right, so next I'm just gonna heat the top and see if I can't like tweeze it into more of a circle. Right, this is a pretty cool example of the baking soap. It is a pretty cool something or other. So then what are your thoughts now? Yeah, are you going to do it? Uh, I'm going to do it because we got a staff meeting, okay. which starts right now. So denied. Future. Perhaps the next show, perhaps on our regular live feed. But it was really tricky to work with, and you're still having issues working with it, so we got to think about a way to get it on there a little more symmetrical, perhaps. So uh, the, the reheating is weird. I think it's hot enough what's normally the amount of time used to reheat something is irrelevant. It doesn't. Nobody's going to bake with this baking soda, right? I could put no, it back in No, you can toss there. it. Oh, it There's another like question. There's another blowing pipe. How in long does baking cake. soda last? This is my special marble scraping tool. The handy dandy 12 inch ruler. Maybe this is good for like absinthe or absinthe. blue caraco, like a shot that's bizarre. I was golfing with him. Took the pictures of the absinthe bar he went to in New York and how they've got it. And I've actually drawn up some absinthe glasses to make in the future, but how they put a metal grate across it and one uh, sugar cube and you slow drip each absinthe drip down for like 10 minutes to make the drink. Super aerated. Over the sugar cube? Yeah, the sugar cube dissolved. Well, it'll be on the experimental shelf. We could the do alien, it like if this. If aliens came down in that it thing, looks we like would a, be freaking out. A derby hat. Sure. I mean, it does look UFO-ish to me. Big okay. time. Um, yeah, so now I want to think about how it changed. Like, to reheat it, it took forever. I don't know. The glass was a little cold. The glory hole's cold. All of the above. But it took a bit to reheat. There it is, folks. Around thumbs for the first UFO to come out of the Glass Academy. Do, 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 do. And to the box she goes. Whoa! Side by side in the box. Yes. Beautiful. That's it. All right. Well, folks, uh, that's the experimental show. It's definitely an experimental situation. It feels weird to do and not have such of a goal and just to experiment with the glass and with the color of other material like that. But that's kind of what the show is. So we did it. Yeah. We're going to keep doing it. And if you guys have suggestions or you want to see something in particular, now's the time. And I, I will always say that the reason we could do these shows and show you something different, we've never done baking soda because it's so experimental, is because of our VIP members. People uh, spending the $4.99 a month to be the VIP members, see on the inside of things uh, what's going down in the shop, get some extra videos and other content, and that's what supports us to do these shows with the whole line and not making product we're gonna sell. It's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna put a link on the gathering page how to do that in case you wanna be a VIP. Right now it's on YouTube, you subscribe to our channel and then you become a member. So that's what Jake's talking about. It's on our YouTube channel, Glass Academy MI, Michigan. Uh, but I'll get something on the website page as well. So. Yeah, and then uh, I think the next video we're going to be posting will be of grinding those discellos and we'll show you how the process of gluing those backs goes on and kind of the detailed work it takes to really get those in place. So. And maybe I'll show up, maybe we'll show a video of that uh, crazy rock that we made earlier when I'm polishing that guy. We'll see.
been a pleasure. Thank you all for watching. Have a great, it's Sunday, so have a great Mother's Day. All right, happy Mother's Day.